Hello, my name is Joachim Birksventner. Welcome to my presentation. It is great to have you as an audience, and I would like to thank the Work Institute for this opportunity. My presentation, Multi-Ethnic Mobilization in the Habsburg Monarchy during the First World War, the case of the Kriegsbild Karten series of 1914-1915, is based on parts of my PhD thesis at the University of Innsbruck, as well as on an article that will be published in the coming weeks. The First World War was a step towards total war, which did not only involve the soldiers at the front, but also the population at the so-called home front. Securing inner solidarity and loyalty of the populations was essential from the very beginning, and accordingly all states at war took measures to this end, including utilizing media, such as newspapers, books, posters, films, or postcards. Securing solidarity and loyalty posed particular challenges for the Habsburg monarchy as a multi-ethnic and multilingual emperor. This talk analyzes a body of postcards as a case study, the Kriegsbildkarten or War Picture Cards series from 1914-1915. It focuses on the question to what extent the image program was suitable for mobilizing the population for war taking into account the monarchy's various linguistic and ethnic groups. This series is part of a wider production of so-called official cards. During the First World War, war postcards were mainly produced by various commercial publishers, but also by patriotic and welfare society or army units. The state remains rather passive, with one exception, that was the official war relief, a combination of the Red Cross and two government agencies, the War Relief Office and the War Aid Bureau. They started already in August 1914, and until 1918 produced about 1,000 to 1,050 different cards that cover a wide range of topics. Their primary intention was to collect money and to promote their cause for the soldiers in need, as well as their families, the widows and the orphans, but also to, quote, promote patriotic sentiments, as Prinz Liechtenstein, the head of the War Aid Bureau, explained. So in other words, to influence the population in support. Of war. It should be noted at this point that the official war relief was for the Austrian half of the monarchy, while Hungary had their own relief agency. And if I speak of Austria in this presentation, I of course mean the Austrian half of the monarchy, not today's area of Austria. These uh, official cards are my main interest of research and topic of my dissertation. The problem with studying them is that in no archive or museum they can be found as a collection. So this was or is uh, one of my projects uh, to create a database. Um, I was able to digitalize the collection of a private collector and in cooperation with the Austrian Academy of Science, uh, this database is now going online. About 100 postcards uh, are already available and it will be continuously expanded. So the idea is that these cards are open to public and can be further analyzed by researchers. So uh, please have a look. Uh, you will also find a lot of the Kriegsbildkarten in Europe. Now, the Kriegsbildkarten series is the first series that was produced by the official war relief 
It was issued from mid-September 1914 until March 1915 and comprised 50 cards in total. Their layout is uniform with black and white images, both drawings and photographs. It has a text box with the number of the card, an image caption that was rather long for postcards, and information on the issuer that was the War Aid Bureau and the beneficiaries, the three uh, bodies that uh, made up the official warrant. Um, with their layout, uh, it was quite a distinct style and visibly different from other uh, cards, both on uh, the private market as well as other official cards. Their style and imagery also stems uh, from the illustrated press, notably uh, Das Interessante Blatt and uh, Die Wiener Bilder. Within the total production of the official war relief from 1914 to 1918, the Kriegsbildkarten belong to the cards with the most clearly recognizable mobilizing messages. Their intention becomes already clear in the press release on the occasion of the publication of the first cards, according to which the series was to, quote, demonstrate outstanding moments from our troops' fight, as the Neuigkeitsweltblatt reported on the 17th of September 1914. Accordingly, the ma vast majority, or 30 cards that are 60%, are devoted to the military successes of the Austro-Hungarian army. 25 of which in the form of drawn dynamic battle scenes, such as the image at the top. The remaining cards include 13 photographs that stage the technology and logistics of the war, such as the card at the bottom, and three are uh, group portraits of generals and members of the Habsburg dynasty. Four cards do not fit any of these categories. As far as the geographical location of the imagery is concerned, 38 cards, or 76%, refer to the so-called Northern Theater of War of the Habsburg monarchy, that is, the Eastern Front. Seven cards, or 14%, deal with the fight of the Austro-Hungarian troops, the Southern Theater of War against Serbia and Montenegro while only one card is dedicated to the Western Front, paying tribute to the achievements of the Austro-Hungarian artillery units made by Skoda, quote, with which the great successes were achieved in the French and Belgian forts. That is the text of card number 16. The war at sea and the non-European locations, as well as the so-called home front, are completely absent on this Kriegsbild. Their aim was therefore not to depict a comprehensive chronicle of the World War, but to pay specific tribute to the achievements of the Austro-Hungarian troops on their fronts against Russia and Serbia. This is also demonstrated by the fact that the Allies, especially the Germans, do not appear a single time, neither in imagery nor text. Apart from the initial successes, the course of war was disastrous for the Habsburg monarchy in the first months 1914-1915. In contrast, the Kriegsbildkarten paint an entirely positive picture of unstoppable, courageously advancing or heroically defending always victorious troops. These battle scenes depicted on the cards follow stereotypical repetitive patterns which are by no means specific to the Kriegsbildkarten series or other cards. 
the images show the dynamically advancing troops who do not suffer any losses or only few losses. They meet the enemy soldiers, some of whom still defend themselves, some of whom are wounded uh, or fallen, and some of whom turn to flight or surrender. With this composition, the positive outcome of the battle could be clearly expressed in one scene, even without clarifying text. The Kriegsbildkarten provide a detailed explanation of how to read the illustrations, making their mobilizing attention particularly easy to grasp. According to the language of the time, the card texts often use the first person plural to strengthen identification, our troops, and try to exaggerate the presented scenes with attributes such as courageous, glorious, enormous, and huge. In light of the terrible losses of these months, the depictions and descriptions uh, appear almost tragic comical. For example, in these cards, where the fierce Bosnians take the enemy entrenchments by storm and take the Russians who fear the bayonet charge prisoners with their bare hands. As this text has already mentioned, the troops that are depicted here are the Bosnians recognizable by their face hats. In 13 cards, that is one quarter of the series, either individual ethnic groups or military units are mentioned. The, the military units can be assigned to specific geographical locations and linguistic composition. It is obvious that a deliberate selection was made in order to express the uniting character of the army. If we look at this table in detail, uh, where we see the recruiting district and language composition, it should be noted that the so-called colloquial languages in both the census and the army of the Habsburg monarchy are not objective facts, but deliberate constructions. Each person was assigned to only one language. In cases of multilingualism, a mixture of coincidence, local administrative practices, and tactical decisions of both recruits and administrators decided which language was put to paper. Such as the images and the texts of the Kriegsbeschreibung, these numbers also serve to construct a controlled image of reality. Geographically, Tyrol is strongly overrepresented with five of these 13 mentions. Four times the Kaiserjäger or Tyrolean rifle regiments, and once the Landesschützen, the territorial infantry. Thus, the traditional myth of the Tyrolean commitment for God, Emperor, and Fatherland was both appreciated and strengthened. This is all the more remarkable as these cards were released before the spring of 1915, before Italy entered the war and the Tyrolean borders uh, had to be defended. But quite likely, this can be understood exactly in this context, as both the Kaiserjäger and the Landesschützen regiments were made up of almost 40% Italian speakers soldiers. So the cards show their loyalty and bravery on side of the monarchy, rather than an oppressed population who wish to be united with Italy. 
of the units mentioned on the click speed carton, only two uh, infantry regiments, four and seven, were German-speaking regiments recruited in Vienna in Klagenfurt, respectively. Uh, German-speaking here refers to the official language of these troops. While otherwise, regiments were chosen, which consists, consisted of at least a quarter of a different language group. Because if at least 20% of the common soldiers in the regiment belonged to a particular language group, this language was given the status of an official regimental language, and subsequently, battalions and companies were formed in these languages. This ins should ensure that the soldiers could be trained as efficiently as possible in the language they know. So, in addition to the Germans and the Italians, these postcards also represented the Slovenes, the Ruthenians and Poles, and the Bosnians. If we look at this table, all big language groups of the Austrian half are represented except one, the Czechs. This is uh, quite remarkable, firstly, as the Czechs were the second largest language group after German. And secondly, this is all the more surprising, as all cards were issued with Bohemian texts as a sales catalog from December 1914 documents. With the publication of the series in German and Czech and some cards in Italian, they covered uh, the two largest, largest language groups in Austria, which together made up 60% of the population. It would therefore have been consistent if this had also found a visual expression. The Czech lands are somewhat represented uh, on this card, uh, number 13, which shows uh, Adolf Freiherr or Baron von Stilfried and Ratinitz. He comes from a noble family with diverse connections to Bohemia, Moravia and Silesia. He uh, leads the Slovene Infantry Regiment that is here shown uh, as fighting bravely with the common soldiers. Stilfried, however, did not speak Czech, as he explains in his Memories of My Life, when he had to give speeches to Czech officers and soldiers during his long career, he had his speech translated, learned it by heart, and then correctly presented it in Czech to the delight of the listeners, but without understanding a single word of it. So this certainly cannot be quite compared to the other cards which show the common soldiers of these specific language groups. If you are now asking, and what about Hungary? Why is there only one card about Hungarian troops and no translation into Hungarian? Well, this can be explained by the producer and consumer level. As said, the Kriegsbildkarten were issued by the official war relief for Austria and intended for buyers of this half of the monarchy. In fact, the Austrian war relief was forbidden to collect money in Hungary, which had their own war relief agency. So they also uh, produced their own postcards in a very similar layout, but with different motives and in Hungarian language. Images and postcards were already perceived before the First World War as suitable means to influence the general population. The army in the border regions, for example in southern Tyrol and uh, in Galicia, had uh, noted that a lot of imagery of foreign uh, royals was distributed and suggested it should be counteracted by distributing patriotic pictures. 
At the start of the war, uh, Friedrich Graf von Tockenburg, the governor of Tyrol, expressed, quote, in general, the present moment at which soldiers from the Italian Tyrol are standing side by side with Austrian soldiers of all nations and fighting a common enemy seems to be especially favorable. Because currently, even those who would usually be susceptible to irredentist influences are imbued with patriotic sentiment. Subsequently, a plan was developed to distribute 150,000 cards among Italian-speaking pupils of Southern Tyrol. And it was decided uh, that the cards produced by the official war relief would be ideal for this. One showed a portrait of Emperor Franz Josef and Archduke Otto, and furthermore, five Kriegsbildkarten were chosen. Three that show fight scenes, uh, two of which involve the regional troops uh, of the Kaiserjäger, and also the Stilfried card was selected. Two show photographs of artillery. Here are the aforementioned Skoda artillery, probably trying to impress technology interesting boy, interested boys. The text of the cards was translated into Italian and on the 2nd December of 1914, the 66th Jubilee of Emperor Franz Josef's accession to the throne, patriotic celebrations were to be held at the schools, which involved the distribution of these cards. It should be noted that for budgetary reasons, only Italian-speaking children whose loyalty was seen as endangered, uh, received such postcards, not the German-speaking ones. A decision that seems neither sensitive nor sensible. To summarize, the Kriegsbildkarten series aimed to promote the patriotic sentiment across ethnic boundaries. Its images focused on military success, technical equipment, and the army cover. It underlined the importance of non-German language groups and visualizes a united fight. It proposes regional and ethnic identification offers uh, for the population and was published in German, Czech, and partly Italian, in an attempt to face big parts of the population in their spoken language. Due to this concept, the Kriegsbildkarten were perceived by authorities as valuable to influence the population beyond the usual way, that is, buying, writing, and sending a postcard, but actually distributing them actively among Italian-speaking pupils. Therefore, the Kriegsbildkarten can be summarized as a small but well thought out contribution to uniting and mobilizing the multi ethnic population of the monarchy. Surprisingly, after the end of the Kriegsbildkarten series in March 1915, much of this potential was left unused. For example, the texts were usually shortened. Specific units were mentioned much more rarely, photographs were barely used anymore, and with a few exceptions, the official cards were produced solely in German. So rather than refining the strategy of the Kriegsbildkarten, much of their potential was left unused for the remainder of the First World War. Finally, I would like to point your attention to the publication I have initially mentioned, um, Bildspuren, Sprachspuren, which is to be published uh, in summer 2020 and will also be available as a free PDF 
online book at the Transcript Verlag. This uh, publication um, is part of a research project at the University of Graz, postcarding Loa Styria, Nation, Language and Identities on Picture Postcards. And this uh, project also um, involves a database, the link uh, given below here, um, and contains a collection of postcards uh, of the Lower Styria region, region in modern-day Slovenia. Up to 1918, this region was uh, part of Styria and inhabited by speakers of both German and Slovenian. So, if you are interested, uh, these postcards, images, printed texts, official notes, notes and handwritten messages provide insight into the realities of everyday life and language use uh, among those living in this multilingual region. And you can uh, explore the shared history of Slovenes and Germans in this region. Thank you very much uh, for your attention and I would be very happy to uh, receive questions uh, or comments either uh, in the comment function on YouTube or as an email. Goodbye.